podcast iGEM Team Bielefeld SEBITEC 2019. What is synthetic biology? Episode 1. Synthetic biology is considered to be the newest development in biology. But it's not just that. It includes the ideas and techniques of many different disciplines. Not just molecular biology and organic chemistry, but also stuff like engineering sciences and IT. The general idea of synthetic biology, or SYNBIO, is to construct artificial systems that are different from everything we find in nature and can help us to solve problems we couldn't find a solution for just yet. Therefore, it gives us the possibility to create biological systems with new traits that can be used in an almost endless number of applications. One of the earliest examples of SYNBIO is the production of human insulin using bacterial cells, enabling us to treat diabetes patients more efficiently. Before scientists achieved this using genetic engineering, the insulin had to be purified from pigs or cows. That was way less efficient and more expensive than producing it using bacteria. But so far, this is just genetic engineering and not SYNBIO. SYNBIO came into play when the insulin produced by bacteria was modified to be more efficient in humans. So people with diabetes that inject insulin have better versions of it than most of us produce. Moreover, many antibiotics are produced or improved using SYNBIO. Additionally, existing antibiotics could be modified to target the bacteria again that gained resistances against them. However, how is it possible to achieve these things? How can you modify organisms to force them to produce what you want? This comes from the fact that the DNA is the template for the construction of proteins. DNA consists of four bases, A, C, T and G. Putting three of these letters together encode for one amino acid. Many amino acids in a row curl up in a certain way and form a protein. And yes, all the casein, whey and albumin you might eat to get stronger muscles are just that. So if we now go ahead and exchange one of the letters of the DNA, the amino acid encoded in that position is going to change. And therefore, the way the long chain curls up is changed too. These differences might be tiny or huge, depending on which amino acid you change in a certain context. Each change in structure means a change in the function of a protein and therefore enables us to improve things like insulin or antibiotics when we screen for these improvements. So far, so good. But just because we know what DNA looks like doesn't mean that we can modify it. I can tell you what a stone looks like and why it hurts if I throw it at you, but without the right tools it would still be hard to change it. One tool that we use in SYNBIO and in all areas of genetic engineering are enzymes that cut the DNA. Enzymes are just proteins that have a specific function and enable all kinds of reactions. One kind of enzymes, restriction enzymes, simply cut DNA at specific sites. You could say that they read the DNA and when they detect a specific word, they cut the DNA strand in half. By doing so, many of them create ends that can be fused together with other matching ends. So, if we want to combine two DNA parts in the lab, we make sure that both include the word that the restriction enzyme recognizes, mix each of them with the restriction enzyme, wait and then mix both pieces of cut up DNA. So usually the word that is recognized by the cutting enzyme is deeply ingrained in its structure and it's almost impossible to force it to recognize other words. Therefore, the positions on which you can cut the DNA are limited. We had to come up with other, more complicated methods to modify the blueprint in other positions, but I'm gonna spare you those. However, at some point CRISPR-Cas9 came along. You might have heard of it. The gene editing scissors. The Cas9, which is basically just a restriction enzyme, was a revolutionary discovery. Want to know why? Because now we can suddenly give the restriction enzyme the words it should recognize. 
This multiplies the possibilities we can use to modify DNA easily and precisely. It made the entire process so much faster and cheaper. But what does that mean for the science of synthetic biology? What does that mean for the people possibly consuming products produced using techniques from SynBio? And how are we dealing with this stuff legally? We'll tell you all of that in the next part of our short series.